I thought I'd make a short video just to explain how I fixed my Bose X aviation headset, which had a problem. So the symptoms were that the uh, flashing LED, which appears on the battery box uh, to indicate that it's operational, sometimes it wouldn't come on and then sometimes it would come on and stay on permanently and it wouldn't flash like it does normally. Sometimes it would work normally. Um, so I had to investigate because it, it was becoming less and less reliable. So the first thing you have to do is you have to take apart the battery box and you need to be careful. It's not a very robust assembly. Uh, there are a couple of screws located inside the battery compartment. One's just tucked under the label by the CE marking and the other one is up between the uh, battery symbols. Uh, you'll need a small um, posi drive screwdriver or Phillips screwdriver to undo those. And then there's a spiral clip which uh, hooks around the moulding in the end and you need a thin flat bladed screwdriver just to ease one of the ends out and then you just carefully chase it round until it unwinds and that undoes the end. It's a bit bizarre really but uh, it does the job. Now you need to be very careful with the battery compartment um, lid. It's got two very small bits of plastic on the end and I would imagine they're very prone to snapping off. And the other thing is they locate inside these two metal strips um, inside the battery compartment and these metal strips are only held on by small plastic spigots which have been melted to to hold them in place. Now when I took it apart one of these was missing in fact it was floating around inside the in, inside the circuit and part of me was thinking this was the reason for the failure maybe this metal part was shorting out something in the circuit um, but as it turned out, that was not the case. But be careful with these. I, win I would imagine it's very easy to dislodge them and have them float around inside and, uh, and cause all sorts of uh, damage to the circuit. Now, the other thing I noticed was the battery terminals, um, the negative terminal, um, the wire was, uh, was not very well soldered into the end, so I, I had to remake that. And on the positive end, I had a similar problem, but also I noticed that the actual... Um, battery terminal itself um, had some evidence that a battery had leaked inside the plating seems to have disappeared so again I was concerned that some of the uh, leaked battery had gone into the circuit and, and, ha and had caused the problem um, but alas that was not the case either so pay attention to your battery terminals if there's any evidence of, of leakage then you need to clean them up because otherwise you won't get reliable contacts the wires they've used uh, these red and black wires are very very thin and uh, they're not many cores of conductor so they, they snap easily so make sure that they are um, in good good order where they solder in because if not you could only you could be soldered on by a single strand and then obviously that resistance in the circuit won't be uh, won't be helpful so that's uh, that side of things now into the circuit so the red and positive, uh, the red and black positive and negative wires, um, I've substituted with these two, which I've got going to a power supply, which I'm just supplying with three volts to simulate two fully charged alkaline batteries. And the terminals are actually labelled. There's a there's a plus sign there and a minus sign there. So I just tacked those in so I, I could experiment with the circuit. Now, <clears throat> when you take it apart, there are two screws which hold. Uh, the, the assembly together. Those are the dip switches which you see inside the battery compartment. This board here, as well as having the dip switches, appears to have some um, switch mode converters for the power supply. There's a flexi ribbon to join the two boards together, so I'm always suspicious of those, um, but this one looks in good order. The boards have uh, a layer of conformal coating, which is probably why when the uh, metal part that holds the hinge in uh, dropped into the circuit it didn't actually do any damage um, and then you can see there's a microcontroller uh, there's a crystal there's a four megahertz crystal there's some other circuitry um, obviously you've got the two left and right volume controls there's the led at the end with its uh, weight, uh, light guide and that's the on off switch a little surface mount uh, push to make switch and various other components which support the micro and the power power on circuitry. So anyway, what did I find? Well, I put a, an oscilloscope onto the, the clock and with it in the failed mode, so i.e. the LED not coming on or the LED coming on permanently, I found that there was no oscillation on either end of the crystal. 
when it was operating correctly, you can see a four megahertz sine wave on the end of the crystal. What was interesting is I, I resoldered the joints and it started working and it seemed to work reliably for a while. And then I left it to um, overnight and tried again in the morning and it was uh, showing the original faulty symptoms. So the heat obviously was doing something in the circuit. So I, I suspected that the oscillator wasn't starting up, which meant that it was either a fault with the crystal or a fault with the, uh, the loading capacitors, which is this one here and this one here. There's also a zero ohm link and I don't know whether I can focus, uh, maybe not, not quite. It says 106, so you've got a high value resistor um, across the crystal, which is quite common. So it was something in that area. So I, I substituted a different crystal in. That didn't make any difference. Um, and then I used some freezer spray to try and track it down. And it turned out that when I sprayed this capacitor here where my fingernail is, you can just about see it where the, uh, the fresh solder joints are, um, that seemed to cause it to uh, not work at all. But when I heated it up with some hot air, it started working again. So anyway, I disconnected this capacitor and the circuit seemed to work reliably. And given that the capacitor is probably only the order of, well, less than 20 picofarads, that kind of makes sense. So I thought, well, I won't leave no capacitor in. So I've actually soldered in, um, what value did I have? Uh, 15 picofarads. So it's an 0603 um, C0G or NP0 uh, dielectric capacitor. Um, and uh, I would imagine any value from 10 to 20 picofarads would, would suffice. So I sort of picked something in the middle and that appears to have fixed it. So that's what I found. I mean, I wouldn't imagine this is going to be a common fault. I can't imagine lots of people having this particular issue. It was probably uh, that the ceramic capacitor was cracked internally um, and that was causing the problem. But anyway, if anyone else has the same problem, uh, that's what I would do. Uh, have a look at uh, either changing the two capacitors or changing the crystal. So I hope that's been helpful.